How's it going guys? So a couple years ago I recorded a video how to build an email preferences center in under 16 minutes um, and it is still one of my most popular videos on my YouTube channel, one of my most popular blog posts, uh, but the reality is Infusionsoft has had several improvements to their landing page builder uh, and actually just last year launched a brand new landing page builder. So um, the logic and the concept is still the same behind this strategy. Uh, but the tech, the tools, and the process for building it has actually changed a little bit. So I wanted to record a new video, let's call it V2, of the Email Preferences Center. Uh, and of course, the benefit here is you're giving your subscribers more control over what types of communication they get. That ensures that they're only receiving the things that are most important to them, meaning your messages will resonate more clearly, your inbox placement will go up just because you'll have more engaged subscribers. So it's a win-win win for, for pretty much everyone across the board. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so we are going to start by grabbing the new landing page goal and just give it a name here. Uh, Email Preferences Center V2 in my case. You can name it whatever you like for yours. And then we'll jump into that goal. Now, if you haven't used the new landing page builder, uh, you do have a bunch of new templates that you weren't previously options for you. So you can select one of those templates. Uh, if you've built these in the past, you're gonna have a My Templates section that you can choose from. Uh, but I'm just gonna start from scratch here. I'm just gonna build one. Um, this is just gonna be for people who are already in my database. So I'm not all that worried about design. I'm just gonna keep it simple and, uh, and I'm using the new builder here because it just gives me a little bit better look and feel, a little more professional and a, and a few different options. So uh, we will start with a one column section up here on the top. This is gonna be our background for the page. So uh, this is again optional, but I'm gonna choose a background image here. Um, and if you haven't played with the new landing page builder, you can upload images. You could choose from your existing images, but they actually give you a stock image library. So some really high quality photos in here. I'm just gonna pick one that, you know, it has a computer in the background. That's really all I'm going for here is, uh, you know, something that connects with the theme for this page. Um, and then I'm gonna pop my logo over this. Uh, so I know that this is gonna be the header, so I'll have the image in the background, and then I want the Monkey Pod logo. So I have an all white logo, and the reason I chose the all white is because I know that the new landing page builder gives me the ability to throw a, a an overlay on that background. So I can actually put like a, um, a green um, filter over that background image, which should make my logo stand out a little bit more. Once you select the color, you just get to choose the transparency here. So that's what I've gone ahead and done. Um, and then I'm gonna add a header to this page just so that's hyper clear what we're doing. This is gonna say uh, email preferences center. Uh, you can call yours, you know, I could I could have said monkey pod email preferences center or, you know, update your preferences, you know, whatever makes sense for you. I like to keep it as simple as possible in this case. Um, uh, the font family here, they don't have my my brand font, so I'm just going to use Montserrat, which is uh, one that I just kind of like. Um, you can change whether you want it bold or not. What I have found is that the preview doesn't really adjust very much, but on the actual page, you'll see once I'm done, it, it is pretty heavy bold. Um, and then now we want to add a section here below this, and it, there's some default sections that you can choose from. Again, I'm going to start from scratch and just kind of fill it in myself. So we'll hop over here to the widgets section and let's add our form. And this is gonna be what actually fills in their information. So it starts with you know their email address, but because we know this subscriber is already in our database, we want that particular field to be hidden. Um, you can add additional fields here. So if there's other information you wanna collect, like I'm gonna do first name, last name, and um, you, know, you could add website or phone number or job title, right? Uh, or custom fields, if there's information that you wanna give them the ability to to use to supplement their contact record, this is how you could do it. Remember, their email address is here, it's already hidden on this page. So you don't have to worry about them overwriting that email, they're just updating additional details there. Uh, you can see I clicked through these different options and, um, and I got rid of the labels just because it's already in the field. So the next thing we need to do is add our virtual fields, and that is how you're going to give your subscribers the choice of what list they want to be on. So I chose a radio option, and I'm going to give it my label, which is uh, in this for this first one. It's do you want my blog updates, right? Yes or no, uh, and then down here you get to add the two options, yes and no. 
Um, now, the key for any options you give them uh, is that those aren't stored on the contact record anywhere, so they need to correspond with Infusionsoft tags. So I've already created these, but if you didn't, you can use that green button there to create your own tags. So I have blog subscriber tag, and then I have blog unsubscribe. So if they choose yes, they're going to get the blog subscriber tag. If they choose no, they're going to get the um, blog unsubscribe tag. Pretty straightforward. They're just basically giving the prospect or the customer the ability to tag themselves. Now let's repeat that. We're going to do it a second time here, but instead of blog, right, this is going to be for my course updates. So um, I have Infusionsoft courses, and uh, when I update them or send out promotions about them or anything, uh, people can opt in to be notified, right? So this is basically just saying, do you want updates when I you know, have an announcement about any of my courses? And I have an Infusionsoft courses tag that designates uh, that, that list, the people who do want that information. And then I have a tag for the no, which is, uh, I think it's courses unsubscribe. So if they don't want my courses, they're basically going to get the courses unsubscribe tag. Um, and that's it. So that's all that option needs there. Now you could build three or four or 10 of those, right? Depends on what your different lists are. So feel free to, uh, you know, add as many options as you have segments of interest, right? Um, I'm just going to do those first two, but you would rinse and repeat that process. Um, let's see here. So you can play with the, the padding and the spacing, uh, the design elements here for the form, uh, give it an outline. What I have found though, is that the outline doesn't really show up until you change the background of that section. So you can see once I add that beige color, then the outline around the fields shows up. Um, so if you're not seeing the same options, maybe you might be that you need to change the background color of that section before that option actually does anything. Uh, I'm going to update my button real quick, uh, just update my info rather than submit, uh, and then change the button color. I For this, I don't even use a brand color. I'm just going to pick a bright orange, something that really pops and is super obvious what I want them to do, and I like to make this button as large as possible, uh, so let's just go XL, but there's a couple button options for the style there if you needed to adjust it or change the shape or you know spacing above or below it, that sort of thing. Uh, again, because this is internal. Um, it's just going to be for my subscribers. I'm not too worried about the design of this page. I'm not going to I'm not gonna mess with too many of those other features, but they are there. So if you've never used this landing page builder, lots of choices here. We're going to add another section. And again, I could use a template. They have templated sections, but I'm just going to build from scratch. I find that to be the, the easiest for me anyway. Let's set this background of the footer. This is going to be the footer of the page. Let's set that to brown. Um, I've got my brand color, uh, 61534B. Uh, and then um, I just want to put a little message there in that middle section, uh, you know, Monkey Pod Marketing LLC. And, and you could add a link back to your website. Uh, you probably don't need that, though, because the goal is to get them to just update their preferences. You don't want to give them any distractions or any reasons to go anywhere else. So I'll just put uh, copyright 2018 and, and that'll be the footer. Um, but you could add your logo down there, any badges, uh, you know, if you have an, like I have a certified partner certification badge or Infusionsoft certified partner badge, I could add that there, just some like trust elements. Uh, but because this is internal, I like to keep it as, as straightforward, as simple as possible. Um, let's add a, a little text widget here just to give them some super clear instructions. So, hey, you know, use this page to update your info or to supplement your contact record or to, you know, uh, this is a good, actually a good tool to, to get them to update their address, right? If you have their address on file, you could give them those fields to let them update it, you know, in the event that they have moved or that their office has changed locations or whatever. So um, update your information using the options below. There you go. That is it. This form, you know, we're whatever, 10 minutes or so into this video and this form is pretty much done. Now, you can build a thank you page. Um, or you can build your own page on your website and send them there. I actually have a generic thank you page that I use for just a lot of different random stuff. So I'm going to use that for now. Uh, but you might want to build a page that just says, hey, your information has been updated. Or thanks for updating your preferences. That sort of thing. Um, once you uh, complete the thank you page, you're going to see this launch page. Um, I haven't built too many pages here, so I'm not super familiar with all the settings. It looks like it's trying to generate the thumbnail for us, but let's just go ahead and publish um, just to keep this train rolling. So once you publish, it gives you a link to the page. Uh, you can see I opened that in a new tab up top. That should be live, and look at that. It's not bad. I, I think this landing page builder 
it, you know, it's it's got some 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 features that I still hope they'll add, but it is light years ahead of what we have had access to in the past. So um, that's it for the landing page. We're pretty much locked and loaded there. So the second part of this campaign is managing their um, preferences based on what they selected, right? So they're going to get a tag. They either are going to get the blog subscriber tag or the blog unsubscribe tag. And they're also going to get the, um, you know, the courses subscriber tag or the courses unsubscribe tag. So I'm going to build four of these little micro processes. And basically what's happening is if they get the blog subscriber tag, I want to remove the blog unsubscribe tag. So I only want them to have one of those tags. And then I'm just going to apply a note to their contact record. And that's really just for for historical purposes to know that today, whatever day that note was applied, they opted in for blog updates, right? Um, and I'll just leave a little note there. They opt, they subscribe to the blog today. So that's, that's what this sequence will look like. And then, like I said, I'm going to repeat this process for the three other options on that page. Uh, the blog opt out. So I'll just change, you know, rather than blog opt in, I'll change that to blog opt out. We need to change the tag that is triggering it. So instead of the blog subscriber tag, this would be the unsubscribe tag. Um, and then in the sequence itself, we're going to, uh, well, let's update the language on the outside blog opt out. And then in the sequence, we'll just switch the tag. So if they're in this sequence, they opted out. So we need to remove the blog subscriber tag, right? That's just making sure the tags are mutually exclusive. They only have one. And we will, again, update the note just so it reflects what they did. They opted out of the blog rather than in. So opted out. Um, and we'll change that the title there to blog opt out as well. And then set that one as ready. And um, set the sequence as ready. And that one's all set. So I can clone both of these now. Because uh, we're going to do the same thing for the Infusionsoft courses. Uh, and I'll just you know speed through this and we'll update those. But basically, if they opt into the courses, uh, we're going to remove the opt out tag and apply a note. And if they opt out from the courses, we're going to remove the opt in tag. Um, so it's it's really straightforward. And you would duplicate that for, of course, all of your options, right? Any of your other options, you had partner emails or nurture emails or specific product promotions, right? Just repeat this process for those. But uh, that's it. Okay, so now we've got all of our processes built out for each of those options from the form, right? So when they fill out that form, they're going to get one or probably two of those four tags, right? Um, so what I want to do is, is just add a sequence here that they all funnel into. So no matter which ones they were in, they all lead to this um, updated your preferences uh, sequence. And the whole goal of this is just to uh, pull them out of the campaign. So... The first thing we're going to do is remove the tag that says updated preferences. And then I'm going to wait five minutes. Uh, that's just an arbitrary amount of time. You could wait an hour or a day or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to wait five minutes and uh, then we will reapply that tag. Uh, so the goal is that we want to make sure that they come through this and uh, they get this tag removed. And the only reason we're removing it is so that we can reapply it because that tag is actually going to achieve a goal and pull them out of the sequence. So we take the tag off, we wait a few minutes, and then we take put the tag back on. Um, and the, the reason I do that is because I don't like having contacts just stuck in these sequences. So I like to have a, a strategy that, that kind of keeps this campaign neat and tidy so that they can go through it again. Remember, if these are their email preferences, they might fill that form out more than once, and we need to be able to have them funnel through this multiple times. So I add an exit goal here, listening for that tag. So there's my whole campaign. That's pretty much everything. They fill out this form. Um, they achieve a couple of those goals. They go into those sequences, probably two of them. And then they go into that, that last sequence. They all funnel into that same one where the tag is removed. It waits five minutes. And then it achieves that goal at the end by reapplying that tag. And that's it. That's it for this campaign. Of course, you could have as many options in here as you had sub uh, portions of your list. But... Um, that, that should cover it, right? And then once you have built that, once you've, you've um, you know, created this process, now we just need to send people to this page. So you can grab the URL um, and you know, drop it into whatever emails you want. You could put it in the footer of, of your emails. I'll show you what that looks like here, but uh, I, I wouldn't put it in this campaign. I'm just using this as a demonstration, but you would go into whatever areas of your application that you are sending emails on autopilot and you would want to make sure that this is available in the footer as an alternative to unsubscribing. 
So let's just choose one of my templates here. And again, you would insert this in your existing emails. Um, the goal here is when somebody gets to the footer, if they're thinking about unsubscribing, we want to give them an option. You know what? Rather than unsubscribe, maybe you just adjust your preferences. Hey, we all get too much email uh, or a lot of email. And if you know these aren't super valuable, you can refine which you know portions of, of our communication you're receiving here. So uh, that's that's how I would handle this. There is just add a link to the footer uh, right right above the unsubscribe. The current configuration of the email builder doesn't let us add it directly to the footer. So I just use a paragraph and I set the text to to light gray so that it sort of blends in with what we've got down there. Uh, it doesn't bother me that the link is blue because that actually draws attention to it over the unsubscribe. So. Uh, that's about the size of things. You could send yourself a test and, and make sure that this is working for you. Uh, but they just recently, uh, as of, you know, I'm recording this video in February 2018, they just recently released a feature so that those landing pages will auto populate with the contact details. And that's critical uh, for, for this process because we need their email address in that hidden field in order for the, um, the, the newly set preferences to go to that contact record. So, um, that is that is the reason that this works is uh, because we have that hidden field and it is auto populated with the contacts details. All right, so that is all she wrote for email preferences center v2. Uh, just about 16 minutes again. Now I want to wrap with the most important part is all this campaign does, all this process does, is apply and remove tags. So if you have automated communication you need to make sure that these tags are also removing them from any automated emails so that you are respecting the preferences that they have selected. Now, if you're sending broadcasts, right, and you're choosing your blog subscribers list, this will dynamically add or remove them from those lists. But if you have campaigns um, and, and the tag is what put them into that campaign, removing that tag does not pull them out of the campaign you need to include an exit goal so that if they choose the blog unsubscribe or the courses unsubscribe tag, it removes them from that process. So uh, this allows your subscribers to manage their preferences, but it's still on us as the marketer behind this to respect those preferences. So if you have questions about this or if you have a um, you know a, an improvement you've made to it or, or something that isn't quite working for you, I'd love to hear how this video resonated with you. Thanks for watching, take care.